Welcome to ProStitcher Designer Tutorials. I'm Kim Sandberg. Let's do a fill behind text. I want to show you how to make this fun design. It's a way to really make a text design pop. Let's start with a new design page. We'll select the Home tab and click on New. Fresh design page to get started with. Next, let's select the Tools tab and then click Text. I'll just click here anywhere on my a design page and it will drop a text box. Let's come here in this text box in the property window, the top property window. Let's highlight text and let's change it to a name. So let's do Kim. We'll do my name. And then we want to change our font. To change the font, choose Cooper Black right here or whatever font it says in this box. This will open a true type font box. We can change this to a different font that is nice and big. However, I want to stick with the one that I have selected, this Cooper. But I want to change it to this black oblique so it's a little bit bigger and bolder. We'll click OK and you can see that it's changed my font. Next, I want to change the height of my text. So right here, the height, I'm going to highlight that 0.79 and type in a 4. I want this to be nice and tall. To apply this change I've just made, we'll scroll down in our upper box and click Apply. You can see it made my design nice and big. Next, we want to break up this text. So we'll do a right click and choose Break Up Text from the right click options. You can see that my design has changed slightly. I have these little lines going through it, letting me know that I'm not using the text options to um, modify my design anymore. Next, we'll select it with the design, the select tool, which it already is. We can see that by the black box around it. And we'll select all the text, which they're all selected. We can see that here in my sequence view. Next, we want to connect all of our designs. So let's go to the preview tab and first we have to change it to artwork so we'll select artwork and you can see now it's only showing me the outline of my design this lets me know that it is in artwork format let's connect our designs we'll do a right click and choose utility and then we're going to use the connect feature you can also see that you can use control T to get this done Next, we want to draw an ellipse around this name. So I'm going to scroll, just using my scroll uh, wheel in the center of my mouse, I am just scrolling towards myself a little bit and scrolling out. I want to go to the Tools tab, and we'll choose one of the artwork functions. We'll choose an ellipse, which is a type of circle. I do want this to be more of a, an ellipse like the shape I'm drawing here. Now we want to have both of these line up together. So we'll come over here in the sequence view and click on all items. And then we'll do a right click and we'll choose a line and center. We'll select all items and do a right click and choose a line here and then we'll do horizontal center. Actually, we're going to do this center here because we want to center the name right in the middle of that ellipse. Now, we, in our sequence view, we want to make sure that everything's selected, and it is. We want to go through and select and do a little changing on some of these designs the names of these designs. So in our sequence view, we'll click on the plus right here, and it's going to show me my different artworks that are available. If I select the first one, you can see that that is my name. Now I want to change this name here, so I'll click on this box again, and then you can see that it's given me the option to be able to type in here. So I'm going to type in name and hit enter, and then we'll do the same thing in the lower box. And we're going to call this one inner circle one. All right, so I have my two options here. I want to make another copy of this inner circle, so I'll do a right click and do a copy, and then we'll paste. 
And I have a second inner circle, but so that these two don't get confused, I'll click on this one again so I can change the name and I'll just do a backspace and type in two and hit enter. So I now have inner circle one and inner circle two. We want to create an echo around the outside of this circle. So we'll have inner circle two selected and let's from the ribbon up here under the tools tab, select echo quilting. I want to change the distance of my outline to 0.25 inches away, so quarter inch. And that's the only thing I want to change. We'll click OK. And you can see that I now have that quarter inch echo around the outside of my design. I now want to fill my inner circle one. So let's collect, let's, let's select inner circle one. And then we're going to come down here and click on the effects tab. Let's go back to our sequence view and I want to make sure that I'm selecting the right one. So let's select the inner circle and then we'll select our effects. I want to choose this one here that is a grid and you will see that it's automatically going to fill it with a grid. Now that's a pretty pretty tight stitching. I don't want it to be quite as close. So we're going to change two options here. We're going to change our stitch length to one millimeter and then we're going to change our density to 15. And then we'll scroll down here and click apply. Much better. That makes it so that it's easier to see what we've got going on here. Now I want to change the order in sequence view. So let's change, let's select sequence view and I want to click on the name and then do a right click and I want to change the order. I want to move that forward. So we'll click there on forward. So now my inner circle is number one and my name is number two. You want to make sure that your name has a higher number than the inner circle. Next, we want to select both the inner circle and the name. So you can hold down the shift or the control, so click on both of those to select them. And then we'll go to the modify tab and we're going to use the trim function. And watch what happens when we click on this. It will remove all the stitches that were inside of that name. Isn't that nifty? I really like that. You can see that there's a lot of thread jumps here. That is okay. We're gonna minimize some of those thread jumps by doing a right click and choosing utility and simplify. And you can actually do this a couple of times, two, three times, and see if it helps eliminate some of those stitches, those jump stitches. Simplify, okay. That's looking pretty good. Next, we want to select all the um, artwork here that does not have stitches selected. So this inner circle has stitches. I can see that because of the number right here in the parentheses, the rest of them all have a zero. So we'll select our name. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I will select these other three. Then I want to go to preview tab, select stitches to assign stitches to those items. You can see that those now all have numbers in the parentheses, letting me know that I have stitches available. Now comes the really fun part. We'll click on stitch out and I'm going to make sure my design, my speed is sped clear up. It's nice and fast and we'll click on simulate and we're going to be able to go ahead and see how this will simulate. I'm actually going to come over here and to speed it up even more, I'll just click here on this bar and drag it across so you guys can see exactly how this design will stitch out all the way through. Well, I hope you have fun with this great project and you're able to create some fun designs in your next quilting project using a fill behind text.